Welcome to The Challenge Historian, where we dive deep into all things MTV's The Challenge. Past, present, or future, if it's happening in the Challenge universe, then we are here to document it. I am your host and dedicated Challenge Historian, Jacob Hollibaugh. Thank you so very much for being here with us today. It's Tuesday. We're 24 hours away from a brand new episode of Season 37, Spies, Lies, and Allies, which means... It's time for a super fast review preview to get us caught up and ready to go for tomorrow night. It's been a very long day since we saw episode three, which was an episode where a lot happened. And since then, we've had Aftermath. We've had Instagram Lives. We've had bonus content. We've had cast members on podcasts. We've had everything. So much to keep up with. So that's why you've got me. I stay up with all of it so that you don't necessarily have to. As always, we're going to do a quick review of what happened in the last episode. We're going to break down things from the between time, and then we are going to make some predictions for tomorrow night's episode at the very end. Fair warning, though, most of this podcast is going to be dedicated to the biggest, by far biggest storyline after episode three, which is the ratings crisis, disaster, whatever you want to say, the ratings tumble that the challenge is currently in and facing. I have a lot to get off my chest in reference to that, so... You've been warned that's going to take up a majority of this podcast in the middle. But uh, with that, that's what we got coming. All right, let's get right to it. All right, first things first, we've got to review everything that happened on last week's episode plot-wise and story-wise. So here we go. We normally put 90 seconds on the clock. I'm confident this one's going to be way faster than that. So I'm not even going to start the clock. That's how confident I am. Here we go. Three, two, one. Everything that happened on episode three of Spies, Lies, and Allies. Ed and Tori have a dinner date to get to know each other as teammates. Then Big T confronts Fessy, among other vets, about not being included in the alliance. Fractures ensue between that alliance. Nellie T leads a boot camp while Devin leads a breathwork shop. Great moments both there. Coriel wants a rookie alliance, but all the other rookies that are paired with vets are just way too comfortable and aren't willing to join. Romance, real romance, finally, between Emmanuel and Michelle, not just talking in interviews about each other. We actually see them together. A daily mission that sees Michelle get a bloody nose. Tatcha and Jeremiah almost drown. CT loses pants and Tommy not just lose his pants, but get a concussion and get kicked out of the game entirely. Ed and Tori got the win. Ed decides Tori can make all the decisions. The vets together pick Tatcha and Jeremiah to go in as the group vote. Then Tori decides not to go the revenge route on Big T and instead puts in Berna and Corey L, sticking with all rookies in the elimination. Because Tommy had to go home, the men don't have to compete, leaving Tatcha versus Berna in the elimination. They play a game that requires building a flimsy ladder out of poles to climb up and ring a bell. After a hard-fought battle, Berna gets the W. Tatcha goes home, but not before she has some words for Tori calling her fake, among other insults. Berna then picks to stay with CT. Jeremiah now with Big T as new partners with Tommy gone, and that is where the episode ends. Whew. All right, there we go. So that's everything that happened last week. Let's now move into what happened In the between time, between episodes, as far as anything that relates to this season of Spies, Lies, and Allies. All right, so for the between time, normally here we cover, you know, everything from Aftermath, everything from as many Instagram lives as we were able to watch, everything from, you know, any social media beef and drama that's going on, any extra clips that they put out, and you know, anything, anything. Uh, But this week it's going to be a little different because we're going to go super fast through a couple things before then talking about the ratings because the show's ratings are way down. So before we dive a little bit deeper into that, we'll quickly review uh, on Aftermath. The most notable thing was just seeing the votes. Uh, Again, we're seeing the votes every week on Aftermath, the show, which you should be watching if you're a Challenge fan on YouTube immediately after Devin Simone host does a fantastic job. And it's actually for the first time, I think, ever really the review every week weekly after show is really, really working and adding value and entertaining to watch for 30 minutes on YouTube at your leisure. So you should watch it. But uh, this week, uh, the main thing was the votes. The votes went uh, according to the Vet Alliance basically all the way through with almost all of the vets voting for Tasha and Jeremiah sticking together. The only couple that didn't um, voted for themselves, Big T and Fessy, which three people voted for themselves, Big T, Fessy, and Huey. Uh, Big T explains her reasoning for it, which is basically she didn't want to vote for her friend Tatcha. Um, so it was a burn vote. I guess the other two probably burn votes. Not totally sure. Um, but it is worth noting that Bettina, Corey, Emmanuel, Emmy, Gabo, Michelle were the rookies that went for Tatcha and Jeremiah that voted not in any sort of rookie alliance, went for the vet's choice. Corey and Michelle were obviously the other names on the chopping block. So that makes sense. But Emmanuel, Emmy, Gabo, and Bettina pretty 
pretty easy to say they're just the four uh, rookies that feel like their vet partner is going to keep them safe at all times, so they're willing to go with that. So the vets stayed strong through the whole thing and should be noted. CT voted with the vets last week. He was the one kind of eye-opening vote that did not. So uh, vets just looking strong is basically what came out of Aftermath. Elsewhere in the world, the main, you know, of across social media, the main thing, Ashley stirring up some drama, as always. Love Ashley uh, going at it with a few people. Um, surprise, surprise, but not really anything we need to talk about. Let's just move straight into talking about the ratings. So if you haven't heard, if you didn't see, it was, you know, all a buzz on Reddit, on, you know, all the challenge Instagram accounts on, you know, all, all across challenge, challenge universe, challenge, social challenge, challenge media, everything that the at last episode, episode three, Spies, Lies, and Allies, was the lowest rated episode of all time on the challenge, the lowest viewership all time in challenge history, and that this season's first three episodes average is lower than just about any season in any time recent memory, one of the lowest absolutely ever all time so far, three episodes, small sample size, but so far one of the lowest rated seasons ever, and by a lot, and a big, a big drop off from Double Agents, a huge drop off from Total Madness, which saw a bit of a boost, um, less to do with the season, more to do with the beginning of the pandemic and almost nothing else being on TV. Um, but we're, it's not going good. It's not looking good so far in... It was such a steep drop to nearly about to half a million viewers where they had been over a million viewers for a bunch of episodes, you know, on a bunch of the last seasons, averaging around 550,000 this this season compared to, you know, almost about, you know, 150, 175% of that in previous seasons. So it's a big drop off. It's a bit of an alarm. And we're going to talk first, we'll briefly say of some of the reasons why. Um, and if you want a more in-depth version of the reasons why or some of the kind of more objective or easier to spot reasons why or some of the historical reasons, historical precedent that we're going to reference here, um, check out Alan Aguirre on Medium, uh, alanaguirre.medium.com. He's a longtime writer on The Challenge, does amazing work. Um, if you're not reading him, if you're a challenge fan, definitely worth adding into your challenge media diet. He did a big long write up of it that was fantastic and amazing and touches on a lot of what I'm about to say briefly with the one uh, one exclusion being the thing I'm going to talk about at the end. That's a little more my personal um, thoughts about this. But some of the reasons, the first, the kind of objective reasons of why these numbers are down. The first big one is all of this has to be known with the cable is down compared to years of old across the board. Cable viewership from the decade ago is way, way down across the board because way less people have cable, way less people watch things live. Um, so that is one thing. And it is a, you know, a caveat of any ratings discussion these days versus previous seasons of this show or any, any show that's been running for a long time. But Another one that's kind of an objective fact looking back at previous seasons ratings is that historically seasons that are heavy rookie seasons, meaning like a lot of rookies up to half or more rookies, brand new people in, usually almost without fail have done worse over the years, especially early on in their seasons when we don't know who some of these people are. Um, and then the other third kind of pretty objective one is that Big Brother is airing at the same time right now, the same uh, brand new season, same time. And what from what I hear from my Big Brother people in my life, a good season. Um, and usually they don't compete super head to head, same night, same, you know, time frame on the calendar. So that definitely has an impact as well. The more the challenge brings in people from Big Brother and other shows, the more they're competing with those other shows just the way, you know, sports, you know, the big traditional sports that we think of, basketball, football, baseball, whatever, compete versus each other when their seasons overlap. If the challenge is going to be an amalgamation of a bunch of people from Survivor, Big Brother, all these other shows coming in, then people that they're trying to bring in, new viewers or people that watch Big Brother or Survivor or these other shows and that if they're airing at the same time, you know, they're going to watch one or the other. And a lot of people would pick Big Brother. If if you're trying to bring Big, Big Brother's audience into the challenge, they're going to Big Brother first and you can get them to the challenge second, but not when they air at the same time. So those three are kind of some three objective-ish, objective-ish reasons that the ratings are down. Some subjective reasons more so that seem to be kind of across the board amongst fans and all challenge media agreed upon reasons that this season is likely down is the spies theme is stale um especially after the double agent seasons with 19 freaking episodes 
it was so long. It, t- it took forever. We talked at the end of that season's worth of podcast that it needs to be a little bit shorter. It can't be that many episodes. It drags on a little bit too long. And the spy theme of it, we, we after 19 episodes, we probably had enough. Um, and so it feels a little bit stale. And the second thing is this veteran group is lacking star power and is a bit of a stale group on its own because it's pretty much the same group of people that we've had three straight seasons um, with the exception of Bananas and Wes falling off each of the last two seasons. But, you know, uh, Amanda is the only one like back this season. Otherwise, Casey, Josh, Fessy, they've been around all three of the last seasons. Nelson and Corey, same thing. Kyle, same thing. Ashley, same thing. Um, and Anissa, same thing. So just across the board, we've, you know, dropped out the Bananas, the Wes, the Durrell, um, you know, I'm missing a few people. Nani, same thing. She's been on the last three seasons. So we've seen the same group of people um, that maybe is lacking a little bit in star power do the last few seasons together. So we feel like we've kind of seen all the stories between these people um, or that they're really going to produce at a high level. So those are all of kind of the reasons that are going around and that I definitely subscribe to. All Everything we just said are definitely reasons why these numbers are down for sure. Um, And again, if you want a more in-depth look at pretty much all of those reasons and a few others and a great historical look at some some past, uh, some just stats and numbers on past ratings versus now, check out Alan Aguirre on Medium. The one reason that I wanna add to the list that I haven't really seen out there and that has become kind of a big thing for me, sort I'm willing to die on a hill, I'm willing to die on as far as it is not good for the show and they need to figure this out, is all of the clips and all of the social media content. Now, what I mean by that is there's two there's two different realms of, of all the content that is put out on social media. And we're gonna come clean. The first group includes people like myself. There's a lot of accounts out there now that you know, funnel challenge content, whether they're people associated with the show that have podcasts or, you know, uh, do recaps on, on, you know, subscription sites or anything like that. Um, the cast members themselves re- throwing out more and more stuff about the show or accounts like my own at challenge historian on Instagram, where we put out clips about the show after the fact. And, you know, you can see the, the best quotes from the episode. You see them a couple days later on my Instagram. I am as guilty as anyone of doing that stuff. However, the the accounts out there, I feel like it is balanced on the pros and cons. It's not great for the show that all of this footage and all of these clips and basically the entirety of episodes could be watched after the fact, the highlights of it on Instagram. But all of those accounts are at least promoting the show. Like at least in my case, if I show a clip of an old season, I show a free ag- a clip from free agents, I put in there you can watch this whole season. It's amazing. You should go back and rewatch it. It's on Paramount Plus or it's out, it's on YouTube or it's at Amazon to buy, whatever. So it is both promoting the show, trying to bring more viewership, um, but it is having a little bit of a detriment as far as being able to see the highlights of every episode, not even necessarily needing to watch every single episode to be able to keep up with what's going on and be able to tune in and tune out and not worry if you miss something, you can catch back up. So guilty as charged here as being a part of that half of the equation on the social media content that's kind of hurting the show itself. But the the one that's most guilty is the actual challenge account itself and MTV and the and all the content they put out around the challenge. And mainly I'm talking about the fact that the 48 hours before the show, they put out the basically the whole daily challenge sometime, a full clip of at least a couple minutes of it. Sometimes the, the whole dang thing. Immediately afterwards, they put out the entire daily challenge, the entire elimination almost right away on their thing. So again, if you didn't watch the show, You could just watch that clip on Instagram and eventually, you know, there's ways to monetize that Instagram there. It's it's good. They need building their show. Social following is good. But if, if someone misses the show and they're like, Oh, I watched the elimination on Instagram, they're never going back and watching that on Paramount plus or on YouTube or wherever they could rewind MTV.com, whatever. They're not, they're not logging in and rewatching that anywhere else that they'd be counted as a viewer. They're just watching that video on Instagram. Same thing with Almost every week now, they put out the first two minutes of the episode a day in advance. They put out a two-minute clip of the biggest dramatic moment. We already know tomorrow night there's going to be a big dramatic talk between Amber and some other vets squashing some beef. We already know that, which we shouldn't know that. It's not a good idea. There needs to be a reason to tune in on time and watch the episode live. 
and having all these clips in advance, showing all of this content in little clipped forms all across your social channels means that I don't have to watch the show to be able to keep up with it. I can see all of the things. I see it beforehand, which may, means I don't need to tune in right away, which means maybe I forget to tune in at all. All of that stuff isn't, isn't very good and is controllable on their part. And with all of this content, the, the analogy I'll make is to the NBA. The NBA has been having this problem the last few years and is starting to really figure out how to deal with it. The NBA, across all of the kind of major sports, major you know traditional sports, if you will, is the one whose ratings have been suffering the worst over the last few years. And a big reason for it is because every they're the biggest, most social friendly sport out there. They have the biggest stars on Instagram and across social media and their highlights are immediately available on Instagram. I don't have to watch the game that night to see James Harden hit five step backs in a row. I don't have to be watching the game to see the Steph Curry three at the buzzer to win or lose or to see the couple LeBron dunks. And when the regular season games don't matter that much, just seeing the highlights on Instagram is fine. I don't need to tune in for almost any game. I stay up with all the parts that I actually want to see. If the whole product two and a half hours every night on TV is not as lessening as far as how entertaining it is in the moment. And I can see all the best parts on social media for free. I don't got to pay to tune in anywhere. That's very similar to what's going on with the challenge a little bit, at least in my mind, is that I don't need a cable subscription. I don't need to, you know, to pay to watch this on MTV.com or buy the season immediately after or pay to stream on Paramount Plus or whatever the way it is to watch this. If I can see most anything I actually want to see from the show on the main Instagram account or on Instagram accounts like the Challenge Historian and many others out there. Again, I am I'm admitting I am part of this problem and that I am personally going to do very little about it other than be, continue to be an account that tries to exclusively sh- promote the show itself and sh- shine a light on the history of the show and you know talk about it in a way that hopefully helps more people want to view or more people be even more engaged with the show and not in a way that's going to hurt viewership even if in a small way I am definitely a part of that problem too. So it's got that mixed in with all the other things we talked about um, and with that I know this is going way longer than a normal normal review preview pod, but I do want to offer up a couple quick solutions. We're going to call this little segment here, Jacob Fixes the Challenge. Boom, done. I, you know, I'm not worried, I should say, I'm not worried about the challenge actually going away, ever getting canceled, anything like that. It's way too, you know, unless MTV ceases to exist, which seems more likely than the challenge just by itself ceasing to exist. Um, that's a story for another day, but... Um, there are some things that I think could be fixed, some changes that could be made. So let's go ahead. Jacob fixes the challenge. Here we go. Here's my advice. Buna Murray, call me. You don't have to pay me anything. Just put my name as a you know as a producer on the end credits. That'll be a life dream and joy for me. You don't got to pay me. Just call me. I'll talk to you through all this stuff. I'll help you out. And here we go. Jacob fixes the challenge. So first one, going off of what we just talked about, zero clips in advance, except for next time on. Bring that next time on down from 60 seconds to 30 seconds. And that's it. That's the only preview of the next episode you put out. Don't show us the daily. Don't show us the elimination. Don't show us the dramatic moments. Don't show us the first two minutes in advance of the show airing. Make us just have to tune in and watch when it airs. Don't give us all that stuff in advance, all right? None of that increases viewership. It only could possibly decrease it. At, at, that's it. None of that gets someone more excited like, oh, I have to tune in this week because this, this looks amazing. Outside of a next week on where you maybe you flash a clip of the hall and let it be known, hey, hall, we're all next episode, tune in, things like that. Sure, that can increase viewership, but all the clips, no. So item number one, zero clips in in advance except for the next time on. Item number two, get the show out faster. I know it's an incredible amount of work and it is amazing that they do this, but the show needs to take place or come out and air four, five, six weeks behind what's happening in real life and not three to four months behind. This season filmed in April, May, and June, I believe. So it's about three to three and a half months behind in real time. Usually by the time a season airs, we're sending people off to film the next one. And it makes it a lot harder for the spoilers to stay under wraps. It makes it a lot harder for the cast to actually engage that far in the future when they're trying to help the show by doing Instagram content, by doing... Uh, podcast by doing all this other stuff. So get the show faster on a timeline faster. I know that's really, really difficult. That makes that the editing a lot more difficult of picking the storylines early on, but it could be done. 
get the show out faster. That's item number two. Item number three, and this is the biggest one. Drop the themes, go back to TJ being the host, and a simple format. Do rivals again. Do X's again. Do free agents again. Bring back a format that we know, that we like. And in episode one, have TJ explain, this is the game, this is how it's played, and it's not changing other than maybe, maybe, maybe one twist somewhere down the line. But otherwise, this is the concept, this is the game. Tell us in, in episode one so we know what we're watching. Keep it simple. Drop the theme. TJ's a host. That's it. You can keep TJ's final. It's his final. We can keep that. But no spy theme, none of that. And just... Get it a little more simple, a little bit more bare bones as far as the game is considered. Then item number four, two to one vet to rookie ratio at all times. Two to one every season, all the seasons. Lower if you need it to be. If you got to eventually get a great group of vets again that want to come back, great. Make it three to one. I don't care. But two to one at worst as far as how many rookies are out. Keep it vet heavy and make the rookies specific quality rookies that you got really high hopes for. No fluff in the rookie class each time. Make it all people like a Kells or a Michaela or a Corey or Michelle are proving to be on this season. Make it people that are going to, you know, you know they're going to pop. You know they're going to be great on the show. No chances at all. I get wanting to represent all these other countries that you want to air this show in, but when you throw on some random person who's probably not going to be great, you know, is not going to be great just because you're like, you know, I want Renan because he's from Belgium. It's not helping the show. So get out the fluff of the rookies, quality rookies, two to one vet ratio, prioritize the show over the sport when casting. All this is going to be related to the casting here, but prioritize the show over the sport. Bring back the Rogans, Pauly, Georgia, Cam, Nicole Z, all of them need to be back. All five of them should be back as far as people who have been a little more recent in like the Dirty 30 era to now. Rogan, Pauly, Georgia, Cam, Nicole, all of them need to be back. They've been stars in the making that we, for maybe their own decision, but haven't been brought back. Bring OGs back in the mix. Laurel, Frank, Jordan, which I know... Uh, I've listened to some interviews they've done. Jordan and Tori are highly unlikely to ever do this show at the same time. I adore Tori. I am a huge Tori stan. I want her on every season, but if it means she has to sit out a season so we can get Jordan back, get Jordan back. He needs to be on the show. Laurel, Frank, Jordan, let Derek Kay and Mark Long be on the regular show, all right? Tell them All Stars has been great. Come back into the regular show. Pick the OGs that are good at television that people are going to want to see and bring some of them back in. And then finally, more into the casting stuff even further, give Johnny Bananas, Wes, and Cara Maria whatever money it takes to keep them on the show for more seasons to come. Whatever it takes. Bananas, Wes, and Cara on the show every possible season you can. CT in that too, but it seems like that relationship is good enough. They're keeping him around. Those four should be on every show until they don't want to be on the show again. Um, so that is my main my main clips, me fixing the challenge. Zero clips in advance. Get the show out faster. No theme, simple format. Two to one vet ratio. Prioritizing show over sport. Bring back the Polly, Georgia, Ro- Rogan, Cam, Nicole. Bring back some OGs, some Laurels, some Franks, some Jordans, even if that's at the expense of Tory for a season. So be it. Bring Derek, Mark, and give Bananas, Wes, Cara all the money they want so that they will be back on the show. That is my suggestions. That is what I think can turn this around. Now, as far as the rest of the season, Spies, Lies, and Allies goes, obviously the theme ain't changing the rest of the season. You know, the cast ain't changing. We'll see if, like similar other rookie-heavy seasons of the past, ratings slowly pick up. We'll see if, you know, Survivor starts in a week or two, if that even hurts ratings even more with people tuning into that. We'll see how it goes. I'm hoping for the best. I think it'll rebound some. I don't think we're about to see the worst ratings in challenge history episode after episode. But um, those are some of my suggestions for future seasons to fix it. And if you would like to hear my fully baked idea for the season that would send ratings through the roof and maybe even make for the best season of all time. I'm not kidding. The best season of all time. I've got the idea. I've laid it all out. I'm putting it together in one big format. You're going to have to wait to hear what this great idea of mine for a perfect season of the challenge is. That will hopefully be coming out this next Monday on YouTube, and we'll also put a version of it on the podcast feed, so you'll get it there as well. But come Monday, I will fill you in on the greatest challenge season that hasn't happened yet, but that should. So that's coming. But otherwise, those are 
those not only is what everything that's been happening in the challenge world, that's my way to fix the challenge, to fix some of this ratings issues that we're having. Some of it's unavoidable. Some of it's just the nature of television in the state of television now, but some of it's fixable. Some of it's avoidable. Those are my suggestions. Let's move into a very quick preview and predictions and get on out of here. All right, finally, we've got a couple predictions while we preview tomorrow night's episode. And as I just ranted about how much I didn't like, don't like them, you should always know, I don't watch any of the clips ahead of time. I watch next week on and that's it. And I avoid all spoilers. So these predictions are mine and mine alone. I don't know anything. I haven't watched the clips of the daily or the drama that's going to unfold or any of that. So if any of these predictions I make, you hear and you're like, hey, I already know that because they already showed it. Well, again, part of the problem that I just talked about, I haven't seen that. So these are my predictions. Last week, we went one for three. Ed and Tori winning the daily challenge was the one that we got right, which I was really proud of. And right away, I was like, ooh, one for, excuse me, one for one. We're off to an amazing start. And the big one, the one I thought was the hardest to predict, but then the other ones failed. I said a vet will be in elimination for the first time this season. Only one, though. That did not happen. I said Fessy will beef with someone, and we... I did not count him and Big T's conversation because it was a very cordial conversation where she was asking about the whole Veteran Alliance and there was no sort of beef between them. So that didn't count. So one for three last week on the season for these specific episode predictions. We are four for six. And now this week, my three predictions for this week. I try to make three every single week. First one, um, I said it last week and it failed, but this week I feel more confident than ever because it failed last week that it's not this week. A veteran will see elimination is prediction number one. Prediction number two, a veteran will win the elimination. At least one, maybe even two. Who knows if they end up in there. But one vet will be in the elimination is prediction one. One vet will win the elimination. Whoever that vet is is going to win the elimination is prediction number two. Prediction number three, sticking with trying to pick the daily challenge winner. Again, haven't watched the clip. Don't know what the challenge is going to be, even though that clip is out there already. I'm going to go with Kyle and Amanda, the vet duo, win the daily challenge, which leads to some of the consternation in that veteran alliance with them having the power again. I don't think it'll be the rookies grabbing that power. I think it's eventually going to be the vets going at themselves, having a big enough number advantage, fractures ensuing. And I think Kyle and Amanda are the perfect two to be at the head of the power, head of the table, having all the power in their hands to do that. I think they win the vet, the daily challenge. So vet sees elimination, vet wins elimination, Kyle and Amanda win the daily challenge. Those are your three predictions for this week. That is it for this podcast. I know it went a lot longer than normal. These are supposed to be 10 to 15 minutes. Today's was almost double that. I apologize. I wanted to talk about that ratings thing a little more in depth and it potentially will do a full its own standalone thing about those if those ratings ensue in their decline throughout this season. But we'll see how that goes. Thank you for being here with us. If you want more challenge related content, even if it's at detriment of the show itself, you can find that at the challenge historian on Instagram. Check out the pod. Make sure you're following or subscribing wherever you listen Full episode breakdown and recaps first thing Thursday morning when you wake up after the show airs on Wednesday night, which please watch the episode live. We just talked about the ratings being not great. Watch the episode live if you can, if you have a way to do that. Watch it live. Listen to the podcast Thursday morning. Check back the following Tuesday evening for these review preview podcasts and subscribe on YouTube if you want the video versions of these or if you want to be sure to see my grand idea that I will debut on YouTube next Monday, it will eventually be on the podcast feed as well. So if you want the audio version, it'll be there, but it'll be highly edited. A lot of visuals going on with it. So check that out on YouTube. Challenge Historian next Monday. Big idea for the greatest season that hasn't ever existed, but should exist in Challenge History coming up then. With that, I thank you for being here. Tune into the episode tomorrow night. Let's hope it's another great one. Let's hope a lot more people watch, and I will talk to you Thursday morning. Peace.